Okay, um, so welcome to a untangling nested headers in Power Query presentation. Uh, today we're going to actually dig into Power BI. This is only 30 minutes, but we're going to get in there, get into the code, and, and do some fun things, right? But I'll, I'll try to make it light, right? Obviously, it's only 30 minutes. Um, so speaking about the, uh, uh, I think Greg was talking about uh, some big boy work that Paul does or something like that. And speaking about big boy work, uh, let's kind of talk about me, right? I'm a senior <laughs> consultant. <laughs> Wait, this isn't the joke yet. The, I'm, I'm a senior consultant at, at, at Pragmatic Works. Um, about tw I, I like to throw some big numbers out, so you know, the more you can pile on, the better. So I've done 20 years of a little bit of everything. So it's uh, kind of a business analysis, project management, data analytics, consulting. I have those three badges. Very proud of them. As you can see, I'm affiliated with PMI, Project Management Institute. So I have Agile certification. I have Business Analyst certification. And this is my newest one. Look, it's Microsoft, MCSA, yay. But um, when I was throwing this picture out there, right, uh, you know how PowerPoint does their, or they're pretending they can do AI there. You know what it wrote underneath the picture for a cap, like suggested caption? It says, uh, young boy smiling at a camera. <laughs> Listen, I'll, I'll take what I can get. <clears throat> um, so, all right, so we're going to just look at two, very quickly, we're going to look at two examples of nested headers. One is going to be with uh, years and months, and the, others, the other one is just going to be with the non-calendar levels of hierarchy. And um, we'll do a lot of learning from the first one, so we'll just skip through, st through some steps in the second one, because they're all going to be repeating. Um, but we're going to learn something today. I don't know what that stands for, so <laughs> excuse me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, right, so um, here's an Excel spreadsheet, and let me try to make this bigger. Here we go. Uh, I'm sure you've seen something like this in your lifespan, where it has, you know, you see the nested headers on the top, and it's kind of like the nested columns, if you will, on the right, right? When you got, uh, you have, actually, this is the wrong file, but let me, let me get the right file first. And it's going to be this one. This is going to be our second one. So the first one is what I wanted to show you. Looks like this. Um, with, if I can navigate that. Here we go. So you see the year and the month. So those are the kind of like the calendar level hierarchies, right, in your, um, in your spreadsheet. And this is more, I mean, the, the way this is formatted is just a simple table. Right, you, you could see his, uh, pivot tables like that, right? But let's just, let's just assume this is a Contoso database, so either Contoso or AdventureWorks, I'm not exactly sure. I just, to be honest with you, to, for this example, so I didn't have much time to study, I just grabbed it right from the a, a companion of the book that I own from Gil, Gil Raviv. Uh, if, you've, if you've heard about him, he wrote a, an awesome book on Power Query. Highly recommended, uh, very practical examples. Um, but I sort of took what he was doing and I improved it, I want to say, a little bit. Okay, so let's, um, let's go jump right into Power BI. So one thing I learned when I was opening both files is uh, Power BI doesn't like to play with open Office 365 Excel so much, so you have to kind of shut one down, otherwise it'll throw you an error in Power Query. Um, so, but since you've seen this, let me go ahead and open <coughs> Probably be a desktop. And so anytime you, you kind of see the, this, this multi-level headed monster, you, you kind of have to think about what are we trying to achieve, right, from a high level perspective. And what we are trying to achieve is a normalized table, normalized fact table, right? And um, if we go into Power Query, which is, hmm, something went wrong, oh well. Um, when you go into Power Query, um, of course you go, I have all the steps here, but I'm going to still walk you through them. So you, since it's an Excel spreadsheet, right, we're going to go new source in Excel, and it's going to produce, um, you know, something like, something like this. You, you know, navigate to it, obviously, you, you um, click OK, and then it brings, um, what you see here is Power BI is looking into that Excel file, and it's seeing 
a, uh, a tab or a sheet, right? And it is also seeing where you see the revenues, it is, it is seeing a named range. So that's what you really want. That's why I go back to say, always look at the data, the, the original data you're seeing and, and you know, what is written there so you can kind of understand what you're dealing with. And <clears throat> somebody was nice enough to name a range for us so we don't have to deal with all these extra headers and the names of the tab and things like that. Um, at the top, you know, we're not lazy, we're just being efficient. So uh, we're gonna grab this uh, revenues name range and it's gonna look like this, pretty close to what we've seen in Excel with you know, less color, obviously. Um, so um, the, the first two steps, again, as you look at the data, you're like, okay, there's some grand totals at the bottom, we don't need those. There's some grand totals up over across here, don't need those. Um, so you kind of have to, like, okay, we need to remove those first, right? But there is, there is a, another kind of time-saving tip or technique we do have, I mean, it's easy to remove um, rows. You can just say remove rows, right? And remove um, bottom rows. It'll get you to, it wants to insert a step, but let's just pretend we do this first, right? Remove rows, remove bottom rows, and you just hit one in there. Uh, I'm just going to show you on here, right? And it, it's dynamic. Every time there's a bottom row, even though you expend the, the data source, it just removes it and, and that's it. However, re, there's no such button as to remove columns, right? You may go remove columns, but you have to be on that column to get it removed. So if you come, you know, after navigation, so you got your uh, total column here, and you click on it, and if you just do remove columns, think about what's going to happen to your data source. The only identifier that shows here is this column 10. You have got to add another column to your data source, it's still going to remove column 10. So you may potentially remove one of your suppliers in there and keep the totals. So this is where you know, a lot of people before had kind of talked about using the interface versus writing some M code. So we're going to write some M code. Um, after some Googling and some book reading, there's this thing, um, you could write this code, it says table.remove columns, and then nest into the, uh, basically a list last function, which uh, grabs from the named range. And that's what makes it dynamic. However, as you know in Power Query, uh, every step that you build relies on the previous step. So if you look, if you click here, right, it says hashtag remove last column. That's exactly what the previous step name is. Unless it's the first step after the navigation step. So if you see after the navigation step, um, there is no hashtag inside that code. So that's what made me kind of adjust what Gil was, was doing in there. So, okay, we're just going to write the, we're just going to remove the last column first with, um, with that um, dynamically, right, with that code without having to write anything additional, any additional steps to rely on because it's like the literally very first step. Um, and then all the other steps you can basically build through the interface on top of it or after it, if you will. Any questions so far? Good. One question back. I'll just repeat the question if, if you like. So I didn't quite follow when you, you talked about um, in the source file, there was a named range. What did it do with it? Um, it didn't do anything with it. Somebody in the Excel file selected the area or the array and just, I think it's called named manager or something like that, and just named it. And uh, Power BI is smart enough to kind of, if there's any named ranges in the file, it just recognize that range. Um, and in fact, I can show you real quick. So we open this again. Um, and I don't remember where the named ranges are, but I'm going to type in a range manager. You can see that somebody selected um, this whole thing, right? Um, from A5 to J48 and named it revenues, right? So what we don't have to deal with anymore, if we, gra if we just grab the sheet, right, it'll bring in all these, uh, the additional like rows one through four, um, it will have to like write more steps to eliminate that. Um, since we don't need to do that, somebody already named the range for us, or we, or we can go back to the source and do it, but um, we're just kind of like skipping a whole bunch of extra steps. Yeah, of course. All right, so let's go back. Where were we? Um, 
over over here. So and then then we kind of have to think about okay, we got rid of the bottom rows and the and the and the row over to the right for the totals. Um, the rest is, becomes kind of a combination of fill downs, transposing, and really pivoting and unpivoting, right? Until we get it to the right format, so we can load it into our model, and that's exactly what we're doing. You know, look at this one. So we got some. We're getting rid of some blanks, right? So for for the now we have to kind of like propagate down the years. So we just go fill down on the year, and the way to do that is transform. You know, you put in that column and then just fill down and that's what that does um, and uh, the, the next thing we need to do is, is kind of merge the columns that don't have headers so for example in this here we have the order you know like a year and a month um, so we're just gonna select these two columns uh, with the control not function and click on merge and what that's gonna produce is essentially this dialog it'll say okay I know you need you want to merge it, but there's a what do you want to use as a separator, right? And that's where you kind of have to be careful. Here is pretty straightforward. It's got four digits for the year and whatever month. There's no weird um, things in there. You just have to avoid using something that may be used inside of the data as a separator. So you know, use a column or a semicolon, something you know isn't going to be found in the data, or you can you can put your own in there too. If you put custom. Okay, um, so that basically merges them, as you can see on the left-hand side. And now, so if we look at it now, it's like, okay, we still have some nulls in here that we need to fill. 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 Unfortunately, there's no fill right, right? <laughs> I mean, actually, it's a, it's a good suggestion for a feature, right? But we'd have to transpose the table, which means that we're making the, the headers now, um, so we're making the, the row a column, right? So we're completely transposing it, and you can see here, um, it'll spin through this pretty quick. Um, now we can fill down, right? So now we can fill down that supplier. Novelty good supplier fills down. Um, and we're pretty much ready to, you know, make first rows headers or promote, promote the headers. And um, here's kind of a really important stopping point. You have to find your anchor columns, the columns that are already in the uh, normalized format, such as order date and the year month. Uh, let's see, where are they? Oh, sorry, uh, they're named incorrectly, but um, those two columns we essentially select, right? And then we go unpivot other columns. So what that does is it keeps those, but then it moves uh, the headers uh, into the, the column next to it of, of the remaining columns. So that's what it's going to look like after that. And so it, now it has an attribute of a year and a month, and then it's got the values down the side. So uh, now we just got to do some cosmetic things like renaming columns, obviously, you know, into date and the revenue, and then changing column types. This is kind of a very important point. Always make change column types your very last step. It accomplishes two things. Uh, first, it what it does is um, uh, essentially it saves you saves you memory in the load time because you're kind of like changing them all in one step, right? Instead of change. Do something else, change, and I think Paul is supposed to cover it in his presentation. So, you know, a little, still a little bit of a center, but um, yeah. And the second advantage is when you do a date in here, when you change it to a date format, um, it automatically recognizes there's a year and a month. So it basically creates like the first of the month of, a, of an appropriate year. So you kind of like kill two birds with one stone. Uh, and that, my friends, makes it a normalized fact table. We can just close and apply, right? And um, it's now in here. And we're ready to build some dimension tables off of it. So that's the first part of the presentation. We have about five minutes. So the second example is just going to be very, very similar. Um, and I'll just kind of stop it uh, really quickly on one one important point. Any any questions so far? No questions? Okay. So let me open this other one. So I think as I already showed you in my first Excel example, um, that table has kind of a non-calendar nested headers, such as a 
such as a sense something has always gone wrong. <laughs> but, you know, hasn't stopped me so far. So, um, let's see. We're just going to look at it uh, right here. Oh, I know what happened. We need to close the... There we go. Unfortunately, Power BI needs to be reopened a few times. So hopefully, hopefully it'll... Re okay, well, let's reopen it. This doesn't play nice with Excel. I don't understand. It should be the same ecosystem, right? All right, um, so back to Power Query here. And something went wrong. But we are in Power Query, so that's a good thing. Okay, um, so kind of same thing, right? Uh, we're, first thing we're doing is removing that last, last column uh, dynamically, so when the um, data source changes, it's not, it doesn't affect anything. It can just expand to the right or expand down. We're, we're going to be covered. Um, where it does make a difference is in the merged in the merged columns because right now we have uh, we have a salesperson right in one column column one and then in column two we have this company name so we need to like as long as you remember what you used as a separator because that's what you're going to split by in the end right and you see the same concept as if it has a three level of headers you just keep splitting it by a separator or keep adding a separator to merge them, and then in the end, when you unpivot it, you just keep splitting it by the same separator. And that's what kind of does the whole trick. That's the whole point of the, the whole crux of the presentation. Um, and so, you know, so I'm skipping over steps here in the interest of time, but yeah, you're just splitting it by the delimiter, and then at the end, you get your, you get your salesperson back, and you get your um, other attribute, which I don't remember what that is now, company, right back. And um, that's it. So you just do a change type at the end, like we did in the previous example, and uh, close and apply, and we get our normalized fact table. Back in here, looks all nice and pretty. That concludes my presentation. Any? <laughs> Thank you. Anybody want to ask one more question? I haven't noticed it. Anybody has a question for Carol? There's one in the back. All right, really making it work. So it's more of a tip with uh, M language. So one of the things about opened Excel files is there's a tilde before the open file. If you put in a step and filter out a tilde, say do not con does not contain tilde, you can open those files without it being open. It doesn't matter if it's open or not. It okay. won't crash your Power BI or M language. Excellent tip. Thank you so, so much. So just kind of keep that in mind. We did that mm -hmm. at my last work. We had like 140 files, and they were crashing every time. It'll slow down the process of the load time, but mm -hmm. at least you can still load the data. Yeah, that, that's a great time-saving tip. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you, Kuro. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thanks.